Welcome in TNC Radio Live. We're live on a Wednesday night, May the seventeenth, twenty twenty three, and this is Clutch Time Sports. Now here are your host, Anderson Binker. Whoa, thank you, Mister Tom Kelly. Good evening to all my wonderful truckers, male, female, on the highways, byways, and freeways of Great United States of these Americas. I know I like to say that's kind of funny. As I sit here in warm, sunny sunshine, California. JB, how you feeling out there tonight, man? I'm feeling warm and fuzzy all over. Just so excited. Oh, that's to be, beautiful. To be in the midst of greatness. You're welcome. And such sweethearts. <laughs> well, it is what it is. It's a nice night. We've got some cool weather out here. It is that time of the evening where it kind of, you know, starts to cool down, get a little nice draft coming from the ocean. And, uh, you know, I was going to talk about something else tonight to start off the show, but we made a little bit of a change. So we're going to jump right into the NFL schedule. We're behind on this. It came out last week, Thursday night, and everybody had a huge anticipation of what the NFL was going to be because of the huge hype of the NFL draft which we covered, and we want to thank you all who listened that night on the NFL Draft. We had a lot of fun. I'm not really impressed with the first week's schedule, JB. I'm trying to figure out the first game, September 7th, with uh, Thursday night football, the Detroit Lions, and the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know if that's a good game for Thursday night to start off. Well, I mean... Obviously, you're going to see somebody like Kansas City on there, but it is interesting to see that perhaps the new darlings of the NFL right now are the Detroit Lions. You you sniff 500 for the first time in 40 years, and look what happens. You're you're getting the opening night game of the season. Uh, pretty interesting. I that 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 game is going to be really strange because outdoors in Kansas yeah. City, Detroit doesn't obviously have this kind of spotlight on them on them wow. most of the time so i i would be surprised if kansas city comes away with anything less than a 20 plus point victory but yeah kind of kind of an interesting start to the season for sure it really is and i'm not a big golf fan but hey you know he's their guy and at least he's gonna be i think he's gonna be their starting quarterback but you know if that's the way they're gonna play it go for it it's a nice i would say a nice easy game for mahomes i mean he's just kind of do your normal reps and kind of relax. Uh, starting off Sunday, September 7th, 10 a.m., the Panthers, well, 10 a.m. for us, um, the Panthers and the Falcons, I could see that game. I understand. I'm excited to see Young. Uh, I heard his first rookie uh, training camp weekend or week went really, really well. He was ahead of what they thought he would be ahead of. Ahead of. They threw a lot of stuff at him, and he just chewed it up and just went on his way. He took ownership of the team, the huddles, and everything. So they said he did really well, but I think that's going to be an interesting game. The Panthers, well, and, you know, and, and and before you get any further into week one, I, there's really only one game that matters that week. No, oh, I knew you were going to say it. Go on and, and, and say it. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, Anderson and Bankers, <laughs> you know, 49ers and Steelers square off against each other, which it, – Maybe it's just me, Ivan, but I know they they rotate the schedules to where you're playing different divisions, you know, basically every yeah. four years. But man, it feels like forever since the Niners have played the Steelers. So for this one to be in Pittsburgh, it'll be really interesting because obviously, new if anybody you watched the Facebook Live uh, draft show that we had here, Ivan was not very happy with the lack of a quarterback taken oh. by the Steelers. So you know, we'll see if uh, Pickett is ready for. Hopefully, you know Brock Purdy for the 49ers that day, but we'll see. I mean, obviously the the marquee game that's going to be for that weekend is Monday night. You're going to have the you're going to have Jets and uh, the Bills in New York. Well, obviously because they're both in New York, but in uh, in East Rutherford, it, you know, as the Jets host New York or the Bills on on Monday Night Football, and Aaron Rodgers in his new uniform i mean of course what great drama you're going to have to start the season i think that's going to be a great game i'm not going to talk about the steelers right now i expect the 49ers to walk in there (laughs) and score 
and beat them just off scoring. Because, no, I'm not a picket fan. They had a chance to get a quarterback. There was a guy out there by the name of Levis who just hung out there to the second round. And I'm, I, I have no words. Well, here's a broader scope question for you, Ivan, with regards to the play, uh, to the schedule for this year. Obviously, we yeah. know Amazon has taken on the Thursday night football right. games um, as of last year. This year, they have announced that Peacock is actually going to be hosting or broadcasting an exclusive playoff playoffs game. I'm, I'm putting it in the jar, Tom. I'm putting <laughs> it in the jar. Um, they're going to be hosting a playoff game uh, this year on Peacock. So, as the digital era expands and we're now seeing by the way nfl sunday ticket on on youtube tv from here on out so do you like the Welcome in, TNC Radio. Live. We're live on a Wednesday night, May the 17th, 2023. And this is Clutch Time Sports. Now, here are your host, Anderson Binker. Whoa, thank you, Mr. Tom Kelly. Good evening to all my wonderful truckers, male, female, on the highways, byways, and freeways of great United States of these Americas. I know I like to say that's kind of funny. As I sit here in warm, sunny sunshine, California, JB, how you feeling out there tonight, man? I'm feeling warm and fuzzy all over. Just so excited. Oh, that's to be, beautiful. To be in the midst of greatness. You're welcome. And such sweethearts. <laughs> well, it is what it is. It's a nice night. We've got some cool weather out here. It is that time of the evening where it kind of, you know, starts to cool down, get a little nice draft coming from the ocean. And, uh, you know, I was going to talk about something else tonight to start off the show, but we made a little bit of a change. So we're going to jump right into the NFL schedule. We're behind on this. It came out last week, Thursday night, and everybody had a huge anticipation of what the NFL was going to be because of the huge hype of the NFL draft which we covered, and we want to thank you all who listened that night on the NFL Draft. We had a lot of fun. I'm not really impressed with the first week's schedule, JB. I'm trying to figure out the first game, September 7th, with uh, Thursday night football, the Detroit Lions, and the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know if that's a good game for Thursday night to start off. Well, I mean... Obviously, you're going to see somebody like Kansas City on there, but it is interesting to see that perhaps the new darlings of the NFL right now are the Detroit Lions. You you sniff 500 for the first time in 40 years, and look what happens. You're you're getting the opening night game of the season. Uh, pretty interesting. I that 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 game is going to be really strange because outdoors in Kansas yeah. City, Detroit doesn't obviously have this kind of spotlight on them on them wow. most of the time so i i would be surprised if kansas city comes away with anything less than a 20 plus point victory but yeah kind of kind of an interesting start to the season for sure it really is and i'm not a big golf fan but hey you know he's their guy and at least he's gonna be i think he's gonna be their starting quarterback but you know if that's the way they're gonna play it go for it it's a nice i would say a nice easy game for mahomes i mean he's just kind of do your normal reps and kind of relax. Uh, starting off Sunday, September 7th, 10 a.m., the Panthers, well, 10 a.m. for us, um, the Panthers and the Falcons, I could see that game. I understand. I'm excited to see Young. Uh, I heard his first rookie uh, training camp weekend or week went really, really well. He was ahead of what they thought he would be ahead of. Ahead of. They threw a lot of stuff at him, and he just chewed it up and just went on his way. He took ownership of the team, the huddles, and everything. So they said he did really well, but I think that's going to be an interesting game. The Panthers, well, the you know, it, and and before you get any further into week one, I, there's really only one game that matters that week. No, oh, I knew you were going to say it. Go on and say it. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, Anderson and <laughs> Bankers, you know, 49ers and Steelers 
square off against each other, it, which it maybe it's just me, Ivan, but I know they, they rotate the schedules to where you're playing different divisions, you know, basically every yeah. four years. But man, it feels like forever since the Niners have played the Steelers. So for this one to be in Pittsburgh, it'll be really interesting because obviously new, if anybody you watched the Facebook live uh, draft show that we had here, Ivan was not very happy with the lack of a quarterback taken oh. by the Steelers. So, you know, who see if uh, Pickett is ready for uh, hopefully, you know, Brock Purdy for the 49ers that day, but we'll see. I mean, I, obviously the, the marquee game that's going to be for that weekend is Monday night. You're going to have the, you're going to have jets and uh, the bills in New York. Well, obviously, because they're both in New York, but in uh, in East Rutherford, it, you know, as the Jets hosts New York or the Bills on on Monday Night Football, and Aaron Rodgers in his new uniform. I mean, of course, what great drama you're going to have to start the season. I think that's going to be a great game. I'm not going to talk about the Steelers right now. I expect the 49ers to walk <laughs> in there and score and beat them just off scoring because no, I'm not a Pickett fan. They had a chance to get a quarterback. There was a guy out there by the name of Levis who just hung out there to the second round. And I'm I I have no words. Well, here's a broader scope question for you, Ivan, with regards to the play uh, to the schedule for this year. Obviously, we yeah. know Amazon has taken on the Thursday night football right. games um, as of last year. This year, they have announced that Peacock is actually going to be hosting. Or broadcasting an exclusive playoff playoffs game. I'm I'm putting it in the jar, Tom. I'm putting it in the jar. <laughs> um, they're going to be hosting a playoff game uh, this year on Peacock. So as the digital era expands, and we're now seeing, by the way, NFL Sunday Ticket on right. on YouTube TV from here on out. So, yeah. do you like the expansion of all these different platforms, or are you kind of like me, where you miss basically having all the games on two channels. Well, I every, miss having all the games Sunday on Monday. I, I miss having all the, the games on two channels, but I'm also a progressive person, meaning that I understand that the next generation watches TV differently. Sure. I think, uh, you know, your nephews and your nieces, they don't, and my children don't watch TV like I do. I mean, my son is if he's not watching old office and you know uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia or whatever the show may be that used to be on air he's watching something else my daughter for a long time watched YouTube so it's a generational thing and we're we're now the that's what change this versus the way it is for us yeah well and and I I like the fact that uh, and I know the NFL doesn't, I mean, NFL teams individually kind of don't like the, the schedule, you know, perhaps playing on a Sunday and then having to turn around and play a short week on a Thursday. But I like having exclusive primetime games that, you know, perhaps I don't see a, a Jacksonville every week that I would not normally see on a Sunday because obviously I'm going to get the Chargers and the Rams if they're playing here locally right. and and getting to see teams that I don't normally see on a on a regular basis. It's nice, to, although the body for the NFL player isn't good. I've always been an advocate for the Thursday night game, but if you're going to play that Thursday night game, Monday, Thursday, Sunday, then you've got to make the preseason almost not at all. Play two games, maybe three games in the preseason, and that's it. Yeah, well, make that's a big deal. Pretty much it. that. They definitely pretty much are that now for sure. And and, and what is short to one game. Well, yeah, and and now of course they have the eighteen week regular season too, so they've expanded right. the you know yeah. the entirety of the regular season going in there, and then of course they've restructured the playoff system as well to where the first exactly. two teams uh, you used to get a buy, but now it's just first you know the the best record in each conference getting the buy for the playoffs. So yeah, it's it's interesting. I what if you take a look totally down the Steelers schedule here? Are you optimistic for even a 500 season? No, I'm not. Because in today's football, you have to score. And the way you do that is by having a quarterback. And if you don't have one, you're not going to win any games. You're just not. I mean, there's a reason why the Jets waited what they waited like they did with bated breath to get Aaron Rodgers. We need a quarterback. 
We've got receivers. We've got a decent running game. But if we don't have a quarterback, we're going nowhere fast. That's why we're paying almost a half a billion dollars now for quarterbacks. That is the number one position in this high-flying game called the NFL. And if you don't have one, you're not going to win on defense only, and that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers are thinking they're going to do. And they're going to find out really hard in their division going up against the Bengals that you've got to put, you've got to hit touchdowns because the Bengals are going to eat up that division. I'm sorry. So I'm not looking too joyful this year. Yeah, it'll be interesting with uh, Baltimore obviously re-signing Lamar. Um, Cleveland is now going to have a full year of Deshaun Watson. Right. You got Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there really isn't much room for the Steelers in their schedule. For uh, boy, I'm looking down the list. I mean, they're <laughs> that's bro- oh. they got San Francisco to start, and then they got Cleveland, which is a winnable game. I think the Raiders are a winnable game at this point. Please don't you know hurt me, bombs. You know on the other <laughs> side of the radio. Um, and then they got Houston, but after that, Baltimore, the Rams, Jacksonville, Tennessee. Uh, no. Cincinnati, Arizona. Uh, they could be yeah. Arizona, New England. So, I mean, it would be a, a really tough sledding to get them above 500 this year. Nine and eight, I don't know, is, is very doable for the Steelers. Having a 500 schedule doesn't make you 500 if you don't win the games because it's a heck of a schedule. And by the way, the last year, right, the every other year, every four years playing out of your uh, league like that. The last time we matched up was September 22nd of 2019, and the 49ers beat us 24 to 20. Close game. Yeah, but they didn't have a quarterback like they. I think they have now, and we had somewhat of a better quarterback than what we have right now. We share the science behind. Well, it'll be interesting, and this the the schedule is always a is an interesting the release parties and stuff for that. We're going to talk about that a little bit later as well. So. There's your little tease for later. <laughs> Coming up next, we have Mr. Kelly's Corner. You listen to Clutch Time Sports on TNC Radio Live. Hot Shot Secret. We share the science behind common diesel problems. For example, diesel fuel cetane levels. The cetane rating in diesel fuel is 42 to 45. Most diesel engines operate more efficiently with a cetane rating of 48 to 50. One treatment of Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme will raise your cetane 7 points, increase fuel economy, and improve cold starts. Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme is available nationwide at truck stops, fine farm and auto stores, and online at hotshotsecret.com. Hot Shot Secret. Powered by science. This info blog on tncradio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Everything truck drivers need to know about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is an issue that affects one out of three truck drivers. Truck drivers who drive tired may be unaware of how much their lack of sleep affects their driving. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration attributes 2.2% of all driving accident fatalities to drowsy driving. Well, there's not a law in place that requires truck drivers to get testing for sleep apnea. If you suspect you have sleep apnea, stay with us to learn more about sleep apnea and how it can affect truck drivers. What is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is a potentially serious sleep disorder that causes you to have pauses in your breathing or take shallow breaths during sleep. It's an extremely common issue that affects millions of people in the United States. If you snore loudly during the night or still feel tired after a full night's rest, you might have sleep apnea. According to the Mayo Clinic, the main types of sleep apnea are obstructive sleep apnea, the more common form that occurs when throat muscles relax, central sleep apnea, which occurs when your brain doesn't send proper signals to the muscles that control breathing, complex sleep apnea syndrome, also known as treatment emergent central sleep apnea, occurs when someone has both obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Symptoms of sleep apnea According to the Sleep Foundation, all three types of sleep apnea share certain common symptoms. Disrupting breathing in which a person's respiration can become labored or even stop for up to a minute at a time. Excessive daytime sleepiness. Morning headaches, irritability, limited attention span, or difficulty thinking clearly. Many of these symptoms arise because of poor sleep and decreased oxygen levels that occur as a result of interrupted breathing. 
Some additional symptoms are connected to obstructive sleep apnea. Snoring, including snoring that's especially loud and involves gasping, choking, or snorting that may cause a person to briefly wake up. Morning sore throat or dry mouth. Frequent need to wake up to urinate. Causes and treatment options for sleep apnea. Sleep apnea occurs when the airway becomes blocked while sleeping. Here are some common causes of an increase in airway blockage. Being overweight, sedative medication, alcohol, family history of sleep apnea, smoking cigarettes, sleeping on your back, nasal congestion. If you suspect you have sleep apnea, reach out to your doctor to get a treatment plan going. Avoiding treating your sleep apnea can result in losing the ability to operate a commercial motor vehicle. Most often, treatment plans will require you to have a CPAP machine in your truck. The CPAP machine helps pump oxygen to you while you sleep. In addition to using the CPAP machine, your doctor may recommend exercising, losing weight, or using different oral appliances that help hold open your airways. As a truck driver, it's crucial to take care of yourself because trucking is such a difficult and demanding job. At times, it can be challenging to take care of your health. Sleep apnea is a real issue in the trucking industry. We encourage all drivers to be aware of the symptoms and to get help if they suspect they have sleep apnea. This info blog was brought to you by The Truckers Network on app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Catch Landline now every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, along with an encore presentation weekdays at noon, right here on TNCRadio.live. And welcome back into Clutch Time Sports. It's the second quarter, and that means it's Kelly's Corner. And uh, mm-hmm. what we do in Kelly's Corner each and every week is I broach a subject related to sports and uh, without giving any fair warning to Anderson and Banker, they have to uh, comment and um, postulate and uh, pontificate. And what what what's some other big words, guys, that you have to do well, with I don't more know. adjectives I'm already, there? Yeah. I'm I'm already impressed that you used broaching questions. Broaching, yeah. that, that's yeah. uh yeah. That's, that's, that's a good start already. So here, so here we go. I've mentioned this a couple of times and, and it started to come up last week and I said now we'll we'll deal with this more next week. And so I've been uh, and we've been talking about it off the air every so often. Uh, but have never really gotten into it on the air. So I want to get into this on the air and talk about dead money. When I say dead money, I'm talking about the amount of money that gets paid to coaches Mm -hmm. who no longer are with a particular university. And I want to help you with this just a little bit, uh, looking at a story that was in ESPN, oh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's been updated a little bit here and there, but... Um, they looked at all of the dead money across all of the FBS programs between January 1st, 2010 and January 31st, 2021. Would you like to take a guess how much dead money was paid out during that time? You're 20, wrong. 2010 You're to wrong. 2020? You're wrong. It was half a billion dollars. <laughs> Half I was about to give my Mike Myers dollars. $1 billion. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. Half, yes. half a billion dollars. $533.6 million to be exact. Now, let's look at that for just a second because I was running a few numbers here. Um, on average, if you look at in-state and out-of-state tuition, and for the sake of this uh, particular exercise, we're dropping Vanderbilt from the discussion because they're a private <laughs> university and they, they throw all the numbers off. So all the other schools uh, have in-state and out-of-state tuition. And when you take their in-state and out-of-state tuition, this does not include room and board. This is just the tuition to go to school. Um, on average, how much do you think it costs? For SEC? one year? For one year. One year? Semester. Yeah. One year. 60000 no, it's it's really not that bad. No, I was uh, going to say for for public school, I, I would guess between thirty and forty thousand. No, not even that bad. That's wow. out of out oh, of wow. out of state. You're not, but so, several states like Texas and Mississippi have sweet deals. If you go to University of Texas or right. Texas A and M or Mississippi State or Ole Miss, all of them under ten thousand 
if you're an in-state wow. student. Arkansas, less than 10000 Auburn, less than... So, but their out-of-state costs, of course, are about three times that. So let's pretend like, for all of the SEC, half the students are in, half the students are out. Okay, uh, in-state, out-of-state. And we'll average right. all of that together and say that each student, just for tuition, pays $16,000. Yeah. All right? There are a total of uh, just under half a million students. So you can tell very quickly that if they took that $533 million and divided it across all of the SEC, (laughs) everybody would get close to a $1,000 scholarship. Or, to put it another way, it would completely pay for an entire year at Ole Miss or Mississippi State, or Arkansas, or Auburn, or Florida, or Georgia. Wow. The entire year wow. of the entire student body, that's how much money was spent, and get this, on SEC coaches. Wow. SEC coaches. So SEC led the pack. That's probably not a surprise to you. Uh, paying out... Uh, to their football, basketball, and women's basketball programs, a total of $151 million to not work there. <laughs> I like the ending when you say that, to not work there. Yeah. Remember that line from uh, Moneyball? <laughs> Remember that oh, line yeah. from Moneyball when yeah. uh, Billy Bean's talking to David Justice? And David Justice is like, I'm getting paid $20 million. He's like, no, you're getting paid $10 million to not play in New York. <laughs> so yeah. you know, that, that's, um, that's basically that's what we're That's how much hear. the Yankees think of you. That's right. <laughs> so uh, Auburn paid out $31 million. Texas paid out $21 million. Ole Miss paid out $20 million. Now, the truth of it is, these numbers are skewed low. Because it was after this when some of the big money contracts were signed and some of the big money contract coaches were fired. So, um, but some of the coaches we're talking about for this example, uh, Will Muscamp. Am I saying that right? Muschamp. Yeah, Muschamp. 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 Okay. Charlie Strong, Todd Graham, Kevin Sumlin. Um, Let's see, who else is on this? Rich Rodriguez, Jim Mora. Wow. Playoffs. I haven't heard that name in a while. Um, <laughs> well, Jim Mora Jr., of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, all of this, you know, being paid out here in uh, just, you know, huge, huge amounts of, uh, of money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so here's my, my question back to you guys in the few minutes we have left here. What do you think about this? Is it, Are we doing something wrong or is this just... Hey, that's the way it goes. Honestly, I think it's not that's the way it goes. I think the system has been rigged towards the coaches for a long time. And I believe now with the NIL and the transfer portal, things are kind of evening out. I think when the kids were stuck, they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't make any money because you have to think about, yeah, $151 million. But let's look at the kind of money that the SEC brings in, not just on their sports, their TV deals, their their uh, you know their merchandise that they sell, infinity on these kids' names. So you got to look at all that revenue stream that comes in today. That's crazy. But under the old system, I can see why it well, wasn't wrong. Okay, but but think of it. You know, I'm, I'm not disagreeing, but also remember, 151 million. The new SEC deal is expected to be a billion dollars. Okay, so th- you're saying 10% of that should go to guys who don't work here anymore? No, what I'm saying is that they felt, based upon what they're looking at, that the value to get rid of that coach and pay him that money was better to move on from them. Because you're talking about a billion dollars per year that the SEC is dividing that up among the schools. That's a lot of money per year. So it, it becomes a wash if you start talking about per year in a 10-year period. 
You know, if I'm yeah. sitting back at my university is making four or five hundred million dollars per year for the next ten years, that's a wash. But I don't I don't agree with that. I want you to get it twisted and think that I agree upon it. I don't. I'm just saying unfortunately that's the way the system was. Josh, think of all the kids that could go to school, that can't go to school. If we just even cut that number in half. It's true. Um, and by the way, I appreciate the fact that you oh. said the numbers were huge. And that was a very <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal breakdown of all the numbers there. That was great. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think it's it, it's certainly a, bri- a byproduct of everything going on with the media and, and the, the deals that you were just talking about. Because if you're in Alabama or anybody else in the SEC, you're competing for precious airtime now. Yes, you're getting a split of, you know, all these uh, d- different revenue streams and, you know, the big deals with, you know, CBS, ESPN, whoever, uh, you know, has got the current contract. But it's so competitive now that you know that if you don't keep up, you're going to be losing a lot of money as well if you're if you're not at the top of that heap. And, and that's kind of why, you know, everybody has been – basically running after Alabama for the last 10 years plus to where, you know, if you got a great coach like they do, you got to, you got to keep him, but you're striving to get to the point where you're a Georgia and a Kirby smart who could take on Alabama year after year after year. And sometimes it's going to come with a price and you're going to, you know, drop a guy like a Kevin Sumlin from Texas A&M or Will Muschamp or all these other guys. And it's just so cutthroat that, uh, you know, if you've got the pockets to do it, I, you're right though. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to see that that money is something that could have been just dispersed among the, the general scholarship fund and, and help school all of these kids. But uh, let's be face it, or let's face it, that money is probably never going to go to those kids anyway. It's probably just going to go back into scholarships for the athletes for which those exactly. coaches are coaching. And, and let's look at this. We talk about TV deals. Let's just don't even talk about the TV deals. Let's just talk about Saturday games throughout this country. Those arenas are sold out. You go to Michigan, the big house seats, seats 100,000 people. On average, they've got over eighty five to 90,000 people sitting in the stands. Now you just extrapolate that from the shoe down in uh, down in uh, Ohio State to Alabama Stadium to Auburn Stadium. I mean, the shoe down in Texas. I mean, these people show up on Saturday. College football is huge, and so let's look at that sixty forty split that they get every Saturday. That's a lot of money. Well, and the sad reality of it too is is that. This is one of the reasons why USC and UCLA are leaving the Pac-12 because exactly. the, the, the people just don't show up for games in the Pac-12 no. like they do in the SEC or the Big Ten. That's right. And, and so the revenue stream just isn't there. And there's no reason for a Pac-12 network or ESPN or whatever station that wants to be the sole you know, distributor of those games to pay a billion dollars like they do for the SEC because everybody wants to watch the SEC. I mean, that, unfortunately, that's just the way it is right now. And maybe if the, you know, things were a little bit different, and we were talking about the early 2000s when USC was just a, a mammoth, mammoth program. Yeah. And they're still good, too, now. But, I mean, even back then, I, I mean, boy, could you imagine them leaving the, the Pac-12 for the, or Pac-10 back then, for the SEC like they're, or the Big Ten like they're doing now? It's just really fascinating. All right. That, it, it is fascinating, and I think it's an interesting subject, and I think it's something we should keep our eye on. But yeah, and one, qu- and one other quick point, too, is I'm interested to see, Ivan, you talked about the NIL, but a lot of the revenues that are going to you know players through that I don't think are going to affect the coaching dead money what whatsoever. I mean, you're you're still having that big pot to draw from. So I still think that the the dead money, it'll be interesting if we're talking about this in 2030 to see how much dead money is there between 2021 and 2030 because these big TV deals are are coming out. Now I bet you well, the, I that gonna number be, I think it's going to make it worse. Right. I think it's going to be maybe even double that number uh, uh, over the next easily. decade. 
easily. I think it's going to even out. I, I think it's going to even out because I, the emphasis before the NIL and all of these things was on the coach. I think that's going to come down a little bit because if you're a five-star, like some of the kids are, they're already making a million to two million dollars. You got a choice of whatever college you want to go to. And you don't necessarily, if, if, if that coach, think about it this way. If that kid or those kids and they are a five star and they go to the GM or, well, now not the GM, the AD, and they say, guess what? I don't like that coach. You need to get rid of him. Now colleges are facing the same thing that professional programs are facing. Do I get rid of the talent or do I get rid of the coach? Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Which is, it'll that. be interesting to see if, you know, by the end of this decade, let's say if the players have enough of that power. I don't think that we're there yet. I think they will be. All right. One more thing. I'm going to change the subject here real quickly and just leave you with this thought. Um, last night, the Blue Jays and the Yankees played in Toronto. It was dollar dog night. I didn't hear the end of the game, but they did announce after the fourth inning that in the first two innings, they sold 32,000 hot dogs. Wow. And how much Pepto-Bismol? Yeah. How many dogs pulled around the stadium? I wonder how many, um, you know, so I don't think they could keep that up the whole nine innings, do you? No. Well, yeah, but but these days you just have to eat fast, too. Everybody's eating like, you know, the speed speed eaters. Get those hot dogs in. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You're listening to TNC Radio.Live, Clutch Time Sports, Anderson and Banker. Stay tuned. Hello, friends. This is Josh Banker from Clutch Time Sports on Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern right here on TNC Radio.Live. We know that life as a driver is not easy, but do you believe in the power of prayer? Whether you're moving down the highway or taking a break, you can take a moment right now to tell God about your needs. Maybe something that concerns you or something you're just thankful for. You need someone to pray with you? No problem. Just call the TFC Global 24-Hour Prayer Line at 866-515-9406. Or if you're using the TNC Radio.Live app, just press the Prayer Line button to be connected to a prayer warrior who will confidentially pray with you and for you. Also, if you're willing to volunteer your time to help pray with and for others, then send us an email at info at tncradio.live and let us know. Thank you and have a blessed day. Be sure to catch the Truckers Network radio show with your host, Shelly Johnson, weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on tncradio.live. All right. I have to say, like Tom Kelly, but I can't quite do it. Welcome back to Clutch Time Sports. And by the way, go out on Instagram and Twitter and take a look at us. We're at Clutch Time TNC. Tell us what you think of the show. Talk to us a little bit. Uh, ask us some questions. We love Thames Sports, all Thames Sports, and we'd like to have fun with it. But it is the third quarter. That time of the day, you can sit back, relax, take your shoes off, maybe drink a little iced tea. And listen to my man. Have a hot man. dog. Have a hot dog. <laughs> because in the last four years, we don't want Trey Ray. Well, a hot dog would be kind of fitting right now because, you know, after halftime, you come back for the oh. third quarter, you've probably grabbed a, a dog and maybe a cold beverage and <laughs> uh, get sit back, relax, and get set for the final half of clutch time sports well trey rangs we start off with a couple of stories that uh, i haven't sort of made mention to of already uh, or at least some off air one on air okay. the one off air we talked about was the fact that the victor Wimbenyama sweepstakes otherwise known as the nba draft lottery last night was won by the san antonio spurs the Spurs, Pistons, and Rockets all came into the draft tied for the highest lottery odds of 14%. And this is only the third time San Antonio will have the number one overall pick. And Ivan, they had it in 1987 and 1997. Who did they get? The Admiral 
and the big fundamental. That's right. David Robinson and Tim Duncan. So two Hall of Famers, the only times that they've had number one overall picks in the draft. So, of course, at seven foot five, we've mentioned him several times here on this show. Yeah. Uh, Wembenyama is considered a generational talent. And considering head coach Greg Popovich is dealing with international players in the past, most notably other Frenchmen like Tony Parker, it seems as though this could be a match made in heaven for both player and franchise. So not only do the Spurs, I think, win here, but I, I can't think of a better place for Wembenyama to start his career. They're going to have Wembenyana and Luka Doncic of the state of Texas. Let me make sure oh. that and let me make sure I understand your story here. So what you're saying is, at the end of the day, oh, to the Spurs go the victor. <laughs> yes, Mister Yoda, like you are correct. Yes. <laughs> to the Spurs go the victim. Mm. Victor, yes. All right, uh, rank number two. It's interesting how everything can be made into an event, and Ivan mentioned this a little bit earlier. The case in point last week, which roughly was two weeks after the NFL draft, they released their full schedule, which we talked about in the first corner, uh, quarter, which showed every uh, team that was playing, what network they were on, if they had a primetime game. By the way, I think the Steelers ended up with three primetime games, two on Thursday night uh, and one on Monday night. I think they actually had a Sunday night too. But anyway, while ESPN, the NFL Network, and others all had special release shows, a lot of teams also had special schedule release events. But if you go online and take a look at the Tennessee Titans, they take the cake for the most entertaining. So, the the did you have you seen this, Ivan? Not yet, but I can imagine what you're going to say. I'm just laughing. So the Titans marketing team took to the downtown Nashville Broadway area, showing random passersby the logo of each of the Titans' weekly opponents to see if they could guess who the opponents actually were. And if you want two minutes of sheer entertainment, I encourage you to look up this video. Some of my favorites were when they showed the L.A. Chargers logo and a lady guessed Lightning McQueen. No, no, it's not the Lightning McQueens that they're playing. Or the Jaguars logo, <laughs> which produced a guess of uh, Chester Cheetah. Or even <laughs> when a group of cowgirls who were there on a, probably on a vacation, it looked like, they saw your beloved Steelers logo and guessed the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how you could get that mixed up, but yes, those are all true answers. And go take a look at the video. I mean, they, they, they showed the same, uh, the New Orleans Saints logo, and somebody guessed the St. Louis Rams, who aren't even in existence. <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy times. All right. Uh, in in a rela- related story, Houston yes. noted that uh, their t- most of their games are going to be played on Friday mornings. So that's I thought that was interesting. <laughs> that's when everybody's watching, right? Friday mornings? Uh, not, not so much, right? Not so much, yeah. Well, our final rang, as the Oakland A's turn, it was announced Monday, Ivan, that the A's have purchased land for what they're calling a privately funded $1.5 billion retractable roof ballpark in Vegas. But ironically, the team is requesting nearly $400 million in taxpayer money for a team that essentially the city really hasn't asked for or they're not really even sure that they want. So... The site is basically where the Tropicana Resort now sits right on the Strip, which is across the street from the MGM Grand on one side and the Excalibur and Luxor on the other. But what's even more odd is they have to go to get the legislation on the ballot for this taxpayer money by June the 5th, which is just a couple of weeks away if they want to get that money. And what was even more odd is MLB had a deal on the table for a $12 billion waterfront retail estate venture, which would have built a ballpark with housing, retail, hotels, all the fun and games to stay in Oakland. So with this crazy story, I mean, obviously the Raiders have moved out there to Vegas. The Golden Knights are there in Vegas who have made the NHL's Western Conference Finals, by the way. 
And it makes me wonder, wants to, I want to po- put this question out to both you and to Tom. If you could have a major sports team move to a certain state or city, what would it be? Or even better, was there a move like when the Cleveland Browns went in the middle of the night to Baltimore that surprised you? Because to me, I think the writing has been on the wall for Oakland for a long time. Um, and I think the once the Raiders moved, nobody re- – I mean, the A's haven't had much of a following in the last – decade or two so uh, to see them wanting to get something built uh, somewhere else does not surprise me at all because if anybody's been to the coliseum in the last let's say 20 years it is just awful Nine thousand four hundred thirty-two. that's the number to remember you know me is that what their att- is that what their attendance that's was their yesterday? average attendance so far this year average no. average it, if if the if the city of Oakland is willing to put forth the dollars to create an environment that includes housing, which is what they're doing in Los Angeles with SoFi Stadium, it's not just SoFi Stadium. They completely rejuvenated uh, Inglewood, and Steve Ballmer's coming in with the Clippers to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. But don't put that on. Do not put this on the fan when you won't build a right. five hundred club. Stop putting things on the fans when you won't do what you're supposed to do. Let's remember, this is the team that made that wrote the book Moneyball, how they could get everything they could without having to pay for it. So if you don't want to pay for it, you're going to suck over there. You're going to suck here. It doesn't matter where you go. You're going to suck because you're not putting any money into the franchise. Whew. Somebody get Ivan a bucket. Cool him down over there. Tired of people blaming the fans for why they want to get up and move. Well, it's interesting because I, checks. Yeah, I mean, it's what's interesting is that they over the let's say the last ten years they haven't had bad teams. You know, but they of course you're five hundred clubs. You're you're well. They've they have actually they've had some playoff teams over the last ten years. But when Giambi was playing with them, they were really good. Well, yes, in the in the early two thousands and mid two thousands, yes. But but what I'm what I'm curious about though is Vegas has definitely shown that they could sustain hockey and football, but those are not one hundred and sixty two game seasons like baseball. Thank you. Um so I think what the A's are doing is smart if they can get this land deal and funding done. They're making it a tourist attraction. They're putting it on the strip. So, I mean, and essentially that's where the Golden Knights and and the Raiders are playing as well. Um, so it makes you wonder if why they couldn't look at what San Francisco did and the rebuilding of downtown that the Giants did when they brought in their new ballpark, ballpark in 2000. Why they just kind of abandoned the city of Oakland like that when they they have a perfect example of what could happen if they just let it happen. I agree with you. I would agree. Let, with let's you. not forget the Giants weren't drawing anybody either. No, a not candle a candle at the Candlefield. No, they weren't. Candlestick was awful. Oh my god, Candlestick was terrible. But you knew that they had good fans. They just had a poor facility in a poor location, and and that's essentially what the A's have here too. So. You know, if they had, you know, I, I, I think that maybe the A's ownership just got too tired of not getting anything done with the city, and they would just, well, you know what, we're just, we're, we're fed up. We're going to move. We're not even going to, not going to take it anymore. But JB, let's go through this. The Warriors have sucked for a long time. How did the Warriors get a new stadium in downtown San Francisco? They, they started were at winning. Arena. They started winning. Yep. They sucked. The reason why you don't see people at Ford Field to watch the Lions, they suck. You can't complain to anybody about money when you're 10 and 35 right now. (laughs) What were you last year? See, you have an argument. All you have, it's kind of like, you know, when I was in college, I worked at UPS. And UPS made one thing. They said one thing clear. Sorry, Tom. I know we don't have them on uh, getting uh, any money to us. So. (laughs) 
no sponsorship there. But they made one thing clear over and over to each worker. They said, look it, we don't do anything else but service. And if we don't do that right, no one is going to use us. Well, I'm sorry. In sports, you only offer losing or winning. And if you can't get winning right, who's going to show up and watch your product? Who's going to show up? Who's going to watch Amen. it? Amen, brother Anderson. Okay. Amen. Put some <laughs> money think- into the club and try winning, and let's yep. see what that gets you. Well, and they're they're going to put money into going out to Vegas, so you sure would think that they're going to have to put money into the team wow. there on the field, or else that's going to be a disaster too. It's uh, in Vegas, in my opinion. If Vegas wants to chase after a team, I would go to the commissioner and say, "Look, we want a new team. We don't want a has been team. We don't want them bringing their habits to us." So. Yeah, it'll, we, be, we, it, it'll be an interesting saga over these next couple of years, that's for sure. Are we out of time? Because I wanted to say something about Wimbenyama. Well, let's let's do that in the fourth quarter. Let's take Got a quick it. break, be back, talk about Wimbenyama and the NBA playoffs. You're listening to Clutch Time Sports right here on TNC Radio. Live. It's Trucker's Life Radio from TFC Global with your host, Ron Frazier. Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Here we're helping drivers as they travel life's highway. I love that. The spiritual side, drivers face a lot out on the road. Trucker's Life Radio digs in on the spiritual and moral questions that drivers face on a daily basis. You don't want to miss it. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Trucker's Life Radio from TFC Global with your host, Ron Frazier, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. On the show, Ron interviews guests to help inform professional drivers just like you about the importance of things like human trafficking to sex addiction, to how to overcome the impossible odds on the way to success. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we're back for the fourth quarter of Clutch Time Sports. I'm your co-host, I'm Anderson, along with Josh Baker. Uh, JB, pick it up a little bit, basically, where we left off uh, on Trey Rang's NBA Draft Lottery, Wimbenyata. And, you know, it's really funny how we were talking about him, but one of the things that I noticed in that draft lottery, uh, besides that, you know, uh, the Spurs got that wonderful pick. And honestly, I was hoping the kid wasn't going to go to Detroit Pistons. He could not <laughs> ask to go to, oh gosh. I, I was like, I was like, boy, this kid is going to get lost. He's not going to develop. You talk about going to a premier coach that everyone would love to play for. But not only that, his access to David Robinson and Tim Duncan, sure. the big fundamental is Or going Tony to Parker, help. for that matter. Yes. I mean, that's why I mentioned him before. Oh, my goodness. It's going to help that 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 master. I'm saying that word incorrectly. That maturation, maturation process for him, mm-hmm. because it is a big difference playing in Europe and coming to the NBA. He's a 19 year old kid. He's got a kid's body and he's playing against grown men. And that is not going to be fun. True. But what I'm curious to, to know your opinion about, Ivan, is obviously we got the uh, Eastern and Western Conference finals. But, boy, we've got a lot of shakeup in the NBA after the semifinals of each conference oh, yeah. has finished with Doc Rivers being fired from Philly, Monty Williams fired from Phoenix. Did either of those teams make mistakes with those moves? No. Doc, I think, ran his course. But the problem is, is Daryl Morey, who used to be the general 